Welcome to the 8 Billion Project, where we're on a mission to make an impact by discovering and sharing the purpose of every person on this planet. I'm your host, Lisa Florida. Enjoy today's episode. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the 8 Billion Podcast. I am your host, Lisa Florida. And today we are here for the season four opening episode, which happens to be also the one year anniversary of the 8 Billion Podcast. Today, I am taking everyone back to the motherland, the Philippines, where it all began as a vision of me wanting to be of service to my people. So today I have an incredible guest. She needs no introduction to the people of the Philippines, but for reference point for the rest of the world, because this is a global podcast, my guest today, Christine Klink, also known as Christine Reyes. Christine is a multi-awarded actress in the Philippines and has been in the show, biz for, show business excuse me, for over 18 years and counting. She loves to travel the world with her six-year-old daughter. And this is a very humble, humble introduction, Christine. But um, I'm pretty sure we're going to get into it and people will know so much about you by the end of this podcast. <laughs> Yeah, for but sure. really quick, really quick, before we get started on this interview, I'd like to let the audience know that a little over three weeks ago, Christine would change her vacation plans and go from Russia to the United States to stay with some family and friends. The following events that would transpire in the next three weeks would change the trajectory of her life as she sits before us today to tell her story. So before I have her start her story, one second, Christine. I would like to let you guys know that I was introduced to Christine by my cousin, Christian Esteban. So Ian, we're giving you a shout out here. Um, those two have been best friends for many years. 18 years in Eight, total. 18 years in total. And they were actually first in uh, on the first reality show in the Philippines, right? Yep. So that's how I got to meet this lovely soul, Christine. Uh, whom I met three weeks ago. And in the next three weeks, I got to spend some amazing quality time with her, get to know her story more than ever. But more than, most importantly, I just got to get, I just got to know you as Christine, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we are going to sit down today and you are going to share your story. Thank you so much for giving me the honor of um, this podcast interview for 8 billion. So... <laughs> I'm honored. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm thankful for your time and you know the all the effort you know to really get to know me and I'm very very grateful for that. Oh, you're very welcome. It's been a pleasure of mine. And I'm... you know me, I'm sorry like <laughs> I I get nervous being interviewed so it's very huge for me. No, I'd like to say that. Yeah. And I, you know, I know that we've talked on, on many occasions outside of this and, and you've told, you've told me before that it's, yeah, interviews are really big for you. If you even give them, right? <laughs> <laughs> so today, so today, Christine, what I'm really actually so honored is that it's me and you in this, in this room together. So, but I know that eventually when this, when this is released, it's me, you, and the whole rest the of whole the world. world. <laughs> the whole world. Yeah. But yeah, I'm here to create the safest space possible for you. Um, I had no clue what would happen when I first met you. And you have actually also changed my life by the stories that you share. Because I, what was really interesting is, and maybe it was better, that of course, I knew of course you were famous. And of course, it's kind of crazy because... It would, you know, in all of Ian's life, especially with you coming back and forth here, it would really be only the last three weeks that I really got to know you, you know, yeah. but not as Christine Clank or Christine Reyes. I got to know you just as Christine, you know, yes. for the soul that you are. Or they, or they call me uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. Right? Uh-uh. So do a lot of people know you as that? Mostly the closest ones. Okay. Family and friends. Okay. And yes, they've been your family and friends for what eighteen years? No, mm -hmm. longer. Yeah, because we we met during two thousand three. Okay. Um, we joined the reality show. Yeah. So that's eighteen years already. Yeah, and that reality show that took was. the Philippines by storm. It actually yes. shocked so many people too at the, at success, right? Yes, it's 
even us, we didn't expect it. But you guys didn't know. That is that correct? Because when I talked to Ian, you guys, you guys didn't know when you guys were auditioning that it was going to be a reality show. They didn't tell you details. Is that correct? They didn't tell us everything. They didn't tell you. Everything. No. Okay. Nothing. So not only so was... we were clueless, but while we're, we were there, yeah, <laughs> we were we were <laughs> we we didn't know what to expect, and then all of a sudden we were all. Together. Famous together as a group. Yeah. Right. And then it was like, <clears throat> and I think it was that whole uh, season where it was the top 10 that you guys made. And then the top, all top 10 ended up becoming really. I'm top pretty, 14. Or top 14. Seven girls and seven boys. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then from there, the rest is history. Correct. <laughs> from there, now I'm here. <laughs> what? Uh, fast forward, what? 18 years later, right? Yeah. 18 years later. Oh my gosh. Even me, I'm all like, is this real? <laughs> and you are here to share a story or share yeah. your story, actually. Yeah. So, yes, no, really, honestly, it's just me and you here. And of course, I know, like we said in a few minutes ago, it's you and me right now mm -hmm. in uh, maybe, you know, once it's aired, then of course, it's you, me, and the world. world. <laughs> Hi world, yes. <laughs> so this is really this is really big for both her and I. I'm celebrating yeah. the one year anniversary of Eight Billion Podcast. Happy anniversary! Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I have never. Uh, I would never really. Um, what I wanted to say actually is to the audience is thank you so much. I can't. I could never imagine where this would have taken me. Like from the beginning. And actually what I do want to say is, so the reason that I had this vision with the Philippines, I visited probably in 2010 and I kind of saw it, you know, I visited in 2010. It was one of my visits, but for, for me, it was super impactful. And in that visit, I got to kind of just really understand, like I had already started my spiritual journey and I was just starting to kind of like really see life from a different set of eyes. And when I started to see life from a different set of eyes, what I had found was that I had like this great heart for the Philippines. You know, I, of course I was born here in the United States, but going back there, I just saw, right. You know, my parents came from there and I could have lived a totally different life. So from there, I really wanted to do something different. So whether it was going to be working for children or single mothers, I didn't know. I just knew I wanted to do something for the Philippines, but it would almost take 10 years to go on that journey before this dream was realized. And when it was realized was in 2020. It was one year. One, yeah, 2020, about a year ago. A year. Yeah, I was going through another big spiritual awakening and I said, okay, it's time. I have a calling. I'm going to do it for the Philippines. And and the only way, because we were in lockdown, was, you know, I, I have a friend that had a, a live streaming app called Kumu. Mm, and correct, one yeah. day mm -hmm. I was I was told to just go ahead and start live streaming. And I was like, I'm not gonna live stream you guys. But I just knew it was a calling and it, I just had God speaking to me. And so I turned on the camera and the live streaming camera and it was amazing. Um I ended up enjoying it. I had lots of family and friends support me. And then three months later, I ended up starting the eight billion podcast, which I decided on top of just the Philippines, I was going to go global with this. So where it took me a whole year later is nothing I can ever explain in words. And so to be to be here in front of you and sitting with you as my one year anniversary and my season four opening guest, it's really like incredible journey for me. So thank you. I can't believe I'm hearing this. <laughs> like I'm honored to be here actually when I checked um your your website podcast the, the videos i'm like this is intimidating <laughs> like, <laughs> eight billion project by lisa florida i'm like are you sure she wants to interview me i told um christian and she, he was like yeah are you are you okay with it and then i was like huh o okay <laughs> i mean <laughs> the vision is clear the intention is very good so for me, why? Why would I not say yes? No, but thank you. Considering, like I said, we we talked on so many occasions, and you know, like uh, 
you being like what you said, like sometimes interviews are a little bit harder, nerve wracking, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but see, this is what I'm saying though, Christine, is like, you never know. Like for me, when I thought that I said yes to a calling and a vision and a mission, I never knew that it was going to be in front of camera or even a podcast. I just said yes to God. I said, use me as service. Let me, let me do what, you know, what you want me to do. And so I thought, you know, I came from real estate. I thought it was going to be big business connections, right? Okay, I'll connect people and all this kind of stuff. And then when I was told to live stream, I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. So I did. I called Christian and I said, hey, let's get on a live streaming app together. So it was really exciting. We did like a few episodes together. But of course, you know, Ian had his own journey too to take. <laughs> Oh and my God. that included marriage and a child. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's what ended up happening. So you never really know. That's what I'm telling you, Christine, is where God takes you or where the universe takes you. And obviously it has you here in front of, of in front, you know, in front of me, but a, a global podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're here. Finally, it's been like how many days? Yeah, it has been how oh, many not, days? Oh, not days. It's been a month it's been a month and <laughs> i have been preparing for this see how long it takes for me to like really just <laughs> it's just like myself no. for interview but that's what i'm saying though right podcast and I, I and before before i went on camera we were like let's just wing it whatever's meant to come out is meant to come out true right and it's for me it's like the perfect timing i remember you were driving i was in the passenger passenger seat and yep. i just we were talking i remember telling you i think i'm ready yeah. i'm really ready to be interviewed right yeah yeah well as point of reference that what you're talking about this last week right yeah okay correct. so just for the audience sake i did meet christine maybe three four weeks ago and mm -hmm. we did spend time together mm -hmm. but this last week we went to art galleries we went i picked her up i wanted to hear a little bit more about some of the things we're going to touch on later which was like personal development you know and some of the classes and all that kind of stuff we'll touch yeah. on that in a little bit but i wanted to spend time with her and kind of get to know like you know what was her experience of that but what ended up happening was we were supposed to go to art galleries we, we were we went. Oh, we did go. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. We did go. We did yeah. go to a few art galleries. But then I think by the time it was towards the end of the day, mm. and I think most art galleries here in LA were closer to five already. or six. So we decided to go and eat. And then in that car ride, you were like, Atelisa, I think I want to tell you my story. Or it wasn't, I think. No, I said, like, I. I think when we do the interview, I need to start from the beginning so you understand. Right. That's what I said. Right. Absolutely. And that whole <sighs> ride all the way to Santa Monica would literally be, yeah. And then from that beginning, I think, you know, all of us knows how our life went, our journey in life, right? Right. Well, with me, it's, <laughs> it really started from, at an early age right and yeah i agreed to this to this interview because i felt like maybe somebody can relate to me and oh they can get something out of my story and be inspired as well and you know for me mm, it's just about time for me to 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 voice it out and share it because now I kind of have that knowledge and right amount of wisdom to, you know, understand everything that happened in my life. Because if I, if I shared this story before, during, you know, my career in the Philippines, mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be explaining it or sharing it, telling it to everybody very well because it would be all about bitterness, resentment, you know, I would be like, mm, I don't know how, would, how I would share it back then. Right. You had a different set of lenses. Yes. Absolutely. And it's, I'm grateful that, that I stayed quiet. Yeah. 
Because, you know, Ate Lisa. Sorry, Lisa. No, you can call me Ate Lisa. So anyone listening outside of the Philippines, Ate Lisa is like, or Ate, you want to explain what Ate is? Like sister or, or like some, like a... Ate is, um, for us Filipinos, is um, a respect for your okay. bigger sister. Yes. Yeah, not yeah. elders, Christine. Just bigger I said sister. bigger. You yeah. said elder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I said elder. <laughs> so, but across the board, yes. Uh, like older sister, and then Kuya is older brother. Yeah. So for the rest of the world, we're putting the Philippines on the map, guys. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say that I never shared or like talked to anybody in my life ever about my story even to my sisters and brothers and i remember i told you you know ateliza sometimes our brain how god made our brain is so marvelous because he knows god knows when to shut it down right if if he, god knows that oh christine can't um <laughs> i'm gonna, I'm, gonna get emotional. I'm sorry I got you. um can't handle this right now so i'm gonna shut it down so i grew up like I know something happened, but growing up, I I did not forget it, but it was just there at the back of my head, but I wasn't minding it. I just keep going with my life as how I was, as how I am, like when I was a child, mm -hmm. like, especially, you know, when I entered um, school and then big part of me was the school and then the show business, that was the biggest part of my life because I didn't know that I was operating how I was brought up how I was you know um, how I interacted with my family my biological family as I was explaining about you know our brain now that I'm an adult I want to understand myself that's why I'm here like there's something missing people would ask me a lot what what will make you happy, Christine? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm lost. Like, I thought before having a career, being famous, being, having the life of the party, having money, nonstop flowing of money at a very, at a young age, and buying all the things that I think would fulfill me like cars a house clothes I thought I experienced it but it's not making me feel happy I experience all the things that the society tells you oh if you have this you're gonna be happy right you're famous and the others aren't. So you're the best. <laughs> you're right, right. You're actually living a dream life. But no. So it was a journey for me now that I'm 32. I am still finding that joy and peace of mind. You know, what will make you happy is not about all those things in the world. And um, hmm, for me, uh, yeah, so now I'm having, having some realizations, especially, especially that I traveled here in LA, um, my good friend, my best friend Christian and his family really really you know they're very loving family and 
they treat me as one of their own and they feel for me they you know that someone like really cares and loves you and you know um they really look after you and they did when i came back when i came here so they said like hey do you wanna um try this out it's called um a life success development you know self-growth program like that and i'm and i said yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna go to vegas and you know party, party. There. i was gonna say party <laughs> i said yeah i'll go i'll try it so i went to orange county and i did it for three days mm -hmm. and that's the first time that i met you when Correct. i graduated for the basic basic course <laughs> we we both have taken so just for point of reference to the audience we both have have done the same it's called the basic seminar yeah we're both graduates of an organization and yeah. that's how i was able to be there for her graduation and <laughs> christian was like adelisa christine's gonna be graduating on sunday i was actually in chicago at the time and you know you know, it's so crazy, though, because that week he was telling me already. He's like, I'd like to for you to to meet Christine and talk to her. Yeah, I know. I know. He, right. He mentioned he yeah. did mention it. Yes. What I didn't know is by the time I flew to Chicago that you had entered into it. And you know how I am is I was like, God is so good at Delisa. Like she's in this <laughs> basic seminar and she's graduating on Sunday. And it was so perfect. It was, you know, it's really interesting. That's why I'm saying the stars aligned. I literally flew into that same airport that was across the street from the hotel the night before your graduation. That's why I was like, it's so crazy, right? I don't know if we even talked about some stuff like that. I see. And then I didn't even know until Sunday that you were in Irvine. Oh. I thought you were in LA. Well, I had no clue. So that's what I'm saying. Synchronicities. <laughs> Stars align. Stars align. Stars yeah. Align. So, yeah, um, I, I did that basic seminar and I learned a lot and I didn't know that there was another course like the they call it the advanced, advanced course right yeah advanced seminars <laughs> so I was so um driven and like my I was on fire after the basic course so I said yes yes to the advanced course and from there and you're on another journey another journey <laughs> <laughs> it was so different from the the first course because the first course i'm kind of pampered there because i go up in my hotel room by myself right but the advanced course is you cannot <laughs> whoa on the first day i want to go home yeah i told her it's like it's like doing that basic course on steroids <sighs> And you want to go home and you have roommates, so you don't have your own room. It's and it's not basic <laughs> stuff. It is you dive deep. You yeah. really dive deep into. There's not into a day that I didn't room. cry there <laughs> <laughs> and not just teary eyed, like really sobbing. Right. Yeah. So I learned a lot. Um, I guess um, this is my time to really make a change for myself and like really put put everything into action now i want to why 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 am i like stopping myself to do the things that i like you know i think i discovered myself from all the um learnings from you, you know in new mexico that's right. where i went now I'm realizing, oh my gosh, it all stemmed there. Point of reference, though, just to let the audience know, in the, the advanced seminar was in New Mexico for seven days. And mm -hmm. like we said, like you don't get your own hotel room. You camp out with other people. No signal. No signal. It was just really, you. I mean, it's Focus just you, on yourself. You and your teammates. You yeah. and your teammates to, to get together and learn everything about yourself. And take note that I... I'm the type of person to always, always have to be alone and have my own space and room. And I don't really talk a lot. 
to other people right. and i'm forced on the very first day to do everything like this is not me <laughs> i want to go home <laughs> even wait first day of advanced seminar yes yeah you you really wanted to go home already yeah well remember you were talking about it even when you landed in the united states you're like you wanted to go home i want to go home <laughs> Because like my my thing is all my life I've been living like that. Like I want to be alone. I always want to be alone. I always lock myself up, and it all stemmed from again from my childhood because that was my safety zone. It's my comfort zone. When I'm alone, nobody can hurt me. When I'm alone, nobody can scare me or touch me. So yeah, I would like to begin when. Um, so people would understand it well is I remember growing up in a very loving family right. and they're very um, they're all happy people like I would say normal people <laughs> you know <laughs> very functional um, I I was treated and not just me but everyone every kids there w was um, treated well very well um very loved and um the love is just overflowing with all the people i surround all the people there in that house so um i kind of had a glimpse of how a life should be like you don't need to have a lot to be happy you don't need to have a lot to be content right. because I remember when I was a kid I was very happy right it's the simple things um there's this man there the 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 man of the the house his name is daddy metring and yeah we call everybody calls him daddy metring even even some kids that that's uh you know not his son and daughter not his own I mean they call it they call him mm. daddy metring uh, so obviously <laughs> i'm his daughter so he's so loving he's he's a great great dad ever and every time i think about him i get emotional because i remember how he took care of me like he he is um the best father in the world for me even though we didn't have all the good things in life like you know cars or like a mansion nothing like that even with I with food like whatever is on the table we eat it happily mm -hmm. you know that's how it should be right you don't need to like eat it at a fancy fancy restaurant to be happy right because I know the feeling of eating by myself in a in a nice hotel like around the world i've traveled but i never felt the feeling of how i was before when i was child like we were all happy in a dine in a table and chit chatting and all that that was a brief glimpse of life for me that's normal so I still remember it because, uh, um, I don't know. It remained there in my head. I, 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 I told myself like, never forget that, Christine. Never forget that feeling, that memory of you. Because one day, they sat me down. Um, I was six years old. And then <laughs> something's weird going on. So they sat me down and then my, my, my daddy said, my daddy metering said, actually not him. I think it's, um, his wife, mommy Shirley, you know, um, this is really, uh, something that I need to tell the people because it started from this. This is where it starts. Um, this is where it started. Huh. Like for me, when like it ha like it, something like it happened before. They sat me down and told me, 
you know, you're not a real um child. And then I was like, I was shocked and um I I don't even remember if I said something. I I think I I I didn't say anything. Like I was just in in state of shock. And I was just looking at them. And then they said like your mom is on the way here. Your real mom is on the way here. I think they had to repeat it because I wasn't Prince responding. <laughs> like what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> so and then, yeah, the next thing I remember <laughs> was there's a lady, lady coming over and enter, never, entering the house. You'd never seen her before. I don't remember, oh. but I've, I don't know. Uh, I, I really don't remember. Yeah. Okay. It was the first time <clears throat> I met her in my memory. In your memory. Uh -huh. And then I, the next thing I remember, it's like an episode you know, right. when you're watching a movie or a series, like the next thing I remember was um, my mom pulling me out and I was um, holding my father, my daddy, metring tightly and like, oh, don't let me go, don't let me go in my head. But I was just crying yeah. so much. And whenever I, you know, in the course we took, they will really, really dug every dig everything yeah. inside of you and see what is it that's making you do this, Christine. <laughs> like what's what is it that you're hiding? Let it out, Christine, let it out. So I think like for me it's it's really that memory. And you mean to say when it was during during <laughs> the advent that course that the memory started coming back um because um i think we all in life we all have different trials and pains right but there is always that one thing that yes the one that one moment sometimes that changes everything there's always that for me, like there's always that one thing that I am still crying about, even though I've had a lot of trials, experiences in life. You know, I got a failed marriage. I, my sister and I had um really huge um, issues together, but that doesn't affect me anymore. It doesn't affect me anymore. But this is always, always, every time I think about it, I cry. And then, yeah, so when my mom got me, like, I still remember her driving and I was on the other side and she's like say, saying that you, you have to forget about them. They're not your family. I'm your mom. I'm your only mom and not them. And okay, so I'm like, just quiet because I don't, I don't know her. And then when we came home, she introduced me to my other brother, Holy. And um, hmm, I was in a big house. Like, wow, this is huge. Mm -hmm. There were one, two, um, three, four, five big rooms. Wow. And like, like you can put like 10... To 12 cars inside in the garage that's big for the philippines very Point big reference for everyone it's huge yeah yeah and i'm like well, but i didn't mind it at, at that time because as a child you don't look at that as like oh wow it's it's nice yeah but i felt you know the sadness in that house like when I, first time I came there, like everything is so quiet here. And, you know, it wasn't very warm welcome for me. It, I felt like, oh, I, I, I think I'm, I don't belong here. Mm -hmm. So I, 
ever since when I moved to my mom, my biological mom, I I felt like I didn't have a voice. So my voice didn't matter. So as much as possible, you know, I don't really talk and I just keep everything inside. Yeah. If I see something that's wrong, I know in my head it's wrong. If I hear something that's said to me that's wrong and hurtful, I never, I never say anything. I just keep it inside. So my mom has, um, I think she has a very good heart of like, you know, still, um, have that in her inside of her that she still need she still she still has the need to get me because i'm her child but the thing is my mom i think doesn't know that she is not capable of taking care of all of us how many were there of you oh uh, we're six Oh, there's six of you. Yeah. Okay. So I think the problem there is, you know, um, it was her conscience telling her to like, you know, you left one behind. <laughs> so you better get her. I think that's her conscience or like from God or whatever. It's just that, you know, I, I was very neglected grow as, when I was a child at six years old. Mm -hmm. And... I remember whenever there's problem, like I would constantly hear words like, you know, you should have died. You never should have, uh, you, you, you were never should have been born. I tried so many times to abort you. You're, you're just something else. Like you, your, your grip was there. You should have died, you know, like for me. As a child, hearing that is so, so painful. Of course. <laughs> I, can, I can only it's imagine. It's so painful. Like, I grew up hearing that all the time. I had to be independent at a very young age. And it's very hard if, you know, I, I came from a loving family, very, very... A happy environment, right. like a normal family. And then all of a sudden, my life changed. What is this? Like, wow. I had to survive. Yeah, you went into survival mode. I was always in survival mode during my early childhood. At si yeah, at six. I always keep repeating six because it's very significant. So... I remember it. that's where it started. Why I always want to be alone. Because when I'm alone, I'm safe. You know, that's when it started when I don't interact or socialize with people. Because back when I was six, growing up until I was 21, my instinct to survive in this house, which I called before the hell house, is to lock myself up in a room. So nobody can touch me, nobody can scare me, nobody can, you know, do something to me. And that's where I, I remember that's where I got, you know, my, my, my being of always being scared until now. Right. Until now, I'm always scared. Like sleeping alone, I'm always traveling because of work and, t you know, everywhere I travel, like, I have this feeling of always being scared. Like I'd always check the door if it's locked many times right. until adulthood. Because when I was a child, I'm always scared because um, the environment there is very different from where I began. Right. <laughs> To go from something very loving to yeah. something where you were. Now, did that happen like 
when you were told different things by your mother or did that happen was it on a frequent basis like how, it's like i'm just trying to get an understanding to the depth of where the fear comes from right yeah because like you did say like that became that whole reason why even in your adult years it played out like you were scared and you always wanted to be in a room alone and then maybe as as reference to like how you were on set people would know you as wanting to just be in, on set in your room. Yeah. Yeah. At work, like, they they know me back in the Philippines to be very, how do, how do you say it? Like, very out, very, I have a very high wall, and I don't really like to socialize as much as, like, other people. And I feel like I'm different. I felt like I'm different because I was like that. When I was a child, in our family, like mm, they, all of them, I remember this specifically because I remember they were all eating together, and finally they've um, let me sit in with them, and I still feel uncomfortable because back in. The, where, you know, the family that adopted me back there, whenever we, we eat together, it's very loving and happy. And they, they really, they, they really see me there. They hear me there. Mm -hmm. But here, it's as if like, they don't want me there. That's the feeling. The feeling, okay. And my other, my older brother um, would always tease me like, it's hurtful, you know, like the way he teased me before when I was a kid, like it's, it wasn't, it's very, very, um, it's stuck in my head up until now that I'm an adult. So it hurts a lot growing up. And I remember every time there's um things <laughs> happening in the house, like I, almost um set fire not almost because it was there was a big fire in the house and it's because of me because i lit up a cigarette because my older brother told me to light up his cigarette how old were you i don't know i was so young so so the the gas tank had a leakage so it blew up oh and thank god <laughs> i'm i still have my face and everything i'm still like alive and then i got scared because back home where i grew up with daddy metric they will never ever do that to me right yeah so i felt like so so kind of um um helpless there like nobody is really looking out for me so i had to look out for myself and yeah, the constant um, words about I, I I don't belong there. I'm not wanted there. And the hardest thing to swallow before when I was a child was when, you know, I constantly, con con consistently, they, my, my mother would, you know, have this um, anger inside of her, you know, that telling me things like I, sh I should have died and she would like really try to ab abort me and all that and she went here to the states and tried to like give me away here and then she went back home so I'm like that was me growing up like since six years old until 21 yeah. I got my own house. I finally had the courage to move out of the house because I entered the business, show business, and that's, yeah, when I entered the business, um, this, the timeline, you were 14, right? 14, you were 14 yeah. when you entered the reality show, and that was technically underage. 
technically yes. yeah and but i had to lie and this um staff there said you know you can't tell that you're 14 you have to say you're 15. and for me it's a big thing i have to lie like yeah. what it's a big thing as a child right of course of course but then i realized i think this is this is one thing i need to do for me to be able to get out of the house so i did because in the house i was never treated well i don't belong there yeah and my mom was um wasn't present she's living in the past she was living like she should have done this should have done that like you know so we all had our own thing going on us six siblings yeah from six from the time that you were taken all the way maybe up until you went ahead and auditioned at 14 you were constantly like what you said in a household where you didn't truly feel like maybe loved you felt scared you were told things you know behind closed doors and how you were unwanted and then like you said even at the dinner table too you you could never was it that you you didn't want to eat with them or you couldn't eat with them what was you know but that was happening right because you were saying that sometimes you'd hear things from your brother they were very um cold yeah it was cold mm -hmm. yeah and i remember as i've said like i would be sleeping with my mom and the <laughs> the the nightly horror stories that i hear from her about her life and with me so by the time that i got to get my own room i was so happy and that's when it started where i would always just be in a room by myself and i yes. find comfort there and that became but then i don't sleep because i'm afraid like somebody's out there to like to harm me right because of all the things you were told growing yeah, up yeah and it's like a constant survival mode like it's a constant like i'm always in alert um being like i have to be alert i have to be alert always at a young age so no one would ever know this about you mm, i never told anyone every details of it because i shut it down in my head yeah so not i you know life happened i got re very very busy so in school um my best friend louise from school it's all girls school she would always remember me as the kid who always have this angry face and always have this dark circles in my eyes in your eyes because i i wasn't sleeping very well when i was a kid because i was I, i'm always scared and i have been told every almost every day or night that i was unwanted so yeah you were fearing that any night like or any yeah at any time you would be either taken away or killed that's what you that you, that those were the things of course that were happening in your head not that you were threatened of that but it was just more of the stories you started yes. to begin to tell yourself absolutely yeah. like for me i know it's wrong but i couldn't say hey that's wrong don't say that you get it like, yeah i because oh if you you know in our culture like if you answer back you're you're a disres disrespectful you're disrespectful yeah child yeah so you can't answer back yeah that's very true in our culture or in, in many cultures i would say yeah but in our culture most especially in the philippines yeah you and you can't tell anyone about this so i'm like i as a child you just follow rules yes that's very much that's true so even if you know we have we have a telephone before um i can't say anything to anyone with what's happening in that house 
so I had nobody to tell what's going on with me. Right. Like, so now I carried it my whole life, like, oh, something's wrong. I just keep it in. I don't stand up for myself. Even if I don't want to do this or do that, um, sometimes I just always say yes. Do not um, create any tension. Right. So, and, th and that became what you were like growing up mm. and you continue to. Yeah. And so did that play out into your years into showbiz? Not just like in showbiz, in like in school as well. Like I act out in school. So it started young, meaning to say even before you went into showbiz. So even before oh, yeah. 14. In school, like... So you were acting I, out already. I don't... This is what I noticed with me. Whenever I see mm, some kids or like my classmates with their mom in school, like, oh, why is that kid with her mom? And why is the mom like so... Um, I see the mom really taking care of, um, taking good care of her child. Like, I'm like, like, I have like evil eyes. Like, I'm so jealous. Yeah. Like, why, why, why she has that and I, I don't I have don't. it. Mm -hmm. And I carried it until, you know, in my career in the showbiz industry, in, you know, they have their moms and their, your, their family, they're taking care of their, them. So they have someone to like protect them in, in the business mm -hmm. industry. Like, oh no, my, my, my daughter is not, um, you know, she's, she has to rest. Uh, she can't do that anymore. I didn't have that. I had to work until the morning. And I remember my first commercial that I did, like it was already past 12 and I was 14 years old. I can't really articulate, articulate what I want to say. So I just give like a bad behavior. Yeah, that was, so you, you, you acted it out instead of saying things. Yeah. Yes. Because I couldn't speak. Well, I thought all along I couldn't speak when I, when now I'm realizing, yes, you can speak up. Yeah. Yes, you can stand up for yourself. I'm already, you know, 30, 32. And I still have that in me where I, wherein I can't speak my mind, yeah. wherein I couldn't say what I want, wherein I can say no if I don't want to. Right. Right. Because you never spoke up. Yeah, you lived within the constructs of your mind based upon your experiences growing up. And that became your whole world. And even when you went into showbiz and you started to become famous and everything started turning around, you still lived in that in that space. Like where I you still have this mm -hmm. distance and wall around people. Like, like, you know, I have this face of like angry face, which... A lot of people are telling me that, but I'm like, I'm not angry. You didn't know. It was just, it was because. <laughs> it's your defense <laughs> mechanism. Growing up, you know, I was like that because I, I didn't know that it became normal to me that yes. my face is like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, exactly. Because, um, you know, I've been tested so many times in in my childhood right so i have this instinct of always have to fight for my life have to fight for myself even without saying anything just by you know being quiet and not looking people in their eyes it's my me defense mechanism to be pr to protect myself yeah right it was so different though because when you did enter showbiz and then you started getting all the movies i mean i mean you're an award-winning actress right i mean but you'd on set you'd be in your room 
but then once it came out to like filming, you could just completely perform. It was almost like two different, not that, you know what I mean? It's not that saying like, it was amazing how you'd be able to perform in front of camera, but then also like once, once the camera shut off and you just go back to your own room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or if I don't have a room, I'm in my car and even my staff and driver, I don't talk to them. Like I, I've grown, I, I, I didn't learn how to communicate well and socialize with other people. I, because of what I've been through when I was a child. Right. So you were, in other words, you were really misunderstood. I mean, well, very, obvious, very, obviously very misunderstood, very, but yeah. there was so much history behind yeah, what that, went on as to why you were the way you were. Yeah. Mm, yeah. The, mm, yeah, my mom has a very sharp tongue and I think I carried it as well. It's in me as well. And that's what I want to work on. Like I hurt people with my words because I grew up like that. I. I thought it's normal to like say bad things to other people. Wow. And now it's it's going to be hard though because you know I'm already old. I mean, ah, uh, they say like you can't teach old dogs new tricks, right? But still I think if there's a will, there's a way. That's why I'm starting to you know learn, study and I think most importantly is surrounding myself with people who are, who have the sense of real love and support right. with not just within, with their own family, but with other people as well. Right. And that's why I would always, always go back to the people who truly cared and the people who touched my life right so much the reason why i am so close to your cousin christian is because when i entered the business they were so warm to, to me and i found a family in them which i didn't had with my biological family so i would always show up in in their condo and the same thing with my best friend in school, Louise, I would always show up there because that's, you know, I see a family there. Mm -hmm. And I'm very close to all the families of my friends because I, I'm looking for, for that all my life. You were, yeah. Yeah. And, and I just want to... I just remembered one thing that, you know, I want to share because I grew up with a very unloving environment and that it's very important that you have to really watch what you, what you say mm -hmm. because um, I have um, heard a lot of things that aren't nice, like, you know, the things that... um that have been said to me and I carried it until now. And also you have to be really aware and to what comes out of your mouth, like when it comes to your own child, mm -hmm. because I remember my mom saying, you know, nobody will love you and you're going to be alone all your life. Hmm. So, so hard. it was, it's stuck in my head. Right. So I think, you know, words are very powerful. Absolutely. Words are powerful for sure. Whether it's told to you at such an early age or, you know, or so it's now that, yeah. you know, we have better understanding of life. Right. I lived my life being bitter with my peers, with my classmates everyone because because i grew up in a bit bitter environment right. unloving environment like you know i would hide 
in a grotto because I heard a gunshot in the house. Yeah. Gunshot. And I'm by myself. In the house happening, I, I don't want to say what caused it and what happened, but it was in our, our house. And there was constant exchange of hurtful words with each other. So what I'm trying to say is um, we want to cut the curse. I want to cut the curse mm -hmm. of spreading bitterness in the world. Like if you spread bitterness, like which I did all my life, I affect the world. Right. Because I hurt people just by looking at them or like not minding their their presence i contribute to the world which is to the world adding hatefulness and bitterness darkness to the world that's what i'm trying to say is that um because in our culture like whatever christine um just work do your thing hmm. no it's important also to like be aware of how you live your life because now i'm i'm working on it like to be self-aware and yeah i've had this past yeah i've grew i i had a very bad childhood but you can make a difference you can make a difference absolutely and you don't have to always carry it you don't have to always like be oh my god i'm always mad like i'm always angry would you get triggered a lot yeah like I'm very sensitive. Like, that's how I am. Like, all along, I thought it's the people around me. It's the people me. around you. But no, it was inside. No, it's me. Yeah. Because I'm already an adult. So now, like, I've learned, oh, I have to take full responsibility of everything that happened in my life. And don't blame other people. Right? Well, here's another thing. When you know like what you're saying right it's like you blamed everyone else but let's even I go <laughs> let's even go okay let's fast forward to yes, when please. we met right let's fast forward so when she graduated from the first weekend right the basic mm -hmm. um and then i said hey christine because you you spent the night at the hotel and i lived in mission viejo mm -hmm. so i said hey christine i'm gonna pick her i'm gonna pick you up right and then i said i was supposed to take you back to pasadena and I said, but hey, do you want to spend some time together? I said, maybe we I did. could take you to lunch. Yeah. And that's where we started opening up. Mm. Well, well, I, you know, of course I picked you up and I said, hey, let's go to lunch. And then I said, you know, I, I don't, I, of course, I didn't meet you until that night before. And, you know, just from Ian, he was just like, oh, Christine's here. Maybe she's here for a spiritual, you know, maybe she's just looking to get away. Maybe she's looking for something spiritual. But let's dive into relationships because that's mm. exactly what you and i talked about mm. and i of course i didn't know i don't know much about you right and so we spent that day and that afternoon together and i was just explaining to you the journey of like for me and how i saw relationships and so as we got to talk we started realizing similarities Mm. similarities of maybe lack of self-love right we didn't love each other and, and i knew and it's not to say that i knew that about you of course i didn't know any stories i was just saying okay this is my experience and so we we started diving into you know relationships and i told you that i always had this pattern that was happening for me with men and it wasn't until i had to finally instead of blaming the outside i had to turn within 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 yeah. right because Inward. because what i never realized for a long time even if i grew up I, you know i was fortunate i felt like i grew up in a loving family but there i mean there was really unhealthy dynamics so i'm not here boasting that i had the perfect family it's there's so many different things that contribute but for me i had this lack of self-love and i couldn't create healthy boundaries but then as you and i started talking it all started to kind of unfold and you know like you and i started talking about different types of you know relationships that we had been through and that's a big you know that's a big thing for you know especially in my life like my relationships with men um that you know it played a big role even into my adult years mm. 
And it wasn't until like that, you know, the, my outer world started changing when I started loving myself inside, mm. you know, and it even, it even expanded more than just men. It mm -hmm. started expanding to everything because I started, st I, I took the journey inward and I started to learn to love myself and it's not easy and it's a painful journey. And it's a journey where you have to start being open and honest with yourself. And that's the only way to free yourself from it. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. what you didn't know too, is like when you came, when you made the trip here, you, I mean, you never, you know, you knew you, you just wanted to get away. You wanted to take a vacation. You wanted to clear your mind. Well, that's the thing. Why would I always try to get away or like, I would always do spontaneous trips. It's like, I'm, I'm always trying to look for something somewhere out there out like there. would make me happy yeah i was very much the same way too and then when i get there it's the same thing christine make up your mind look within yourself <laughs> it's not where you are or where you at whatever what you have it's inside of you right yeah it's hard it's not gonna be overnight change right it's not as easy as like that right but it's a process that i'm i'm working on like working it's on. a goal that's the goal you know mm -hmm. to to see and feel that the christine back when she was happy and content without having all the worldly possessions and fame, money, whatever. Right. And if you take it back, where is that? That's, if you take that back and who is that? The, the Christine that is content and happy. When was your last recollection of that? I, I was being a normal kid, mm -hmm. a happy kid. And I want that back, a childlike Christine. Right. So you would say probably even before the age, like around before the age of six, before everything started happening, before you went to before survival life, mode, survival. fight mode. <laughs> now that you've gone through both of these advanced, well, the first the basic and then advanced seminar, what were your big ahas? You know, or your what were, I don't know, let me see. Should we start with the basic first or should we really, it was the most profound difference was when you went to the advanced seminar at the ranch. Were those, were so you For the big... basic, I felt more um, the love uh, and support from your family. Right. Christian, my best that. friend. Um, I needed that again because they were gone. They went here in the States and I get got left in the philippines so i but your career blew up at the time i remember it did yeah it did it did but i wasn't at my best emotionally yeah but the career is there the career was definitely <laughs> there <laughs> yeah and uh the advanced course the advanced cor course is at first I hated it and then <laughs> at the end okay I'm liking it now okay right yeah I get it now well because it, what it is is it it you know point of reference it brings the mirror like literally up to your face there is a series of different exercises there throughout. are exercises that, yes you know would remind me always how I play the, my game in my life yes and there were two significant exercises for me that hit me hard. In the basic, um, there's two teams. And instantly, I knew what to do. Right. I voiced it out. We should do this so everybody wins. Not just us, but the Every other team. team as well. Right. I don't know what's in their head. Like, no, we have to win. We have to beat them. And then all of a sudden I got, I was just being by myself again against everyone. Right. Like, 
what's wrong with your head guys like come on we have to win like it's win-win everybody wins what's wrong with that but you okay you're thinking it in your head but you're not speaking up right i i i voiced it out but nobody mind like some oh yes. some guy there like very tall and muscular like looked at me as if like belittling me so i just qu stayed quiet which how i play which uh, how i operate operate in life like okay i'm threatened i'm gonna stay quiet you're gonna stay quiet i'm not gonna voice out i'm not gonna say no because i don't wanna i, I don't wanna trigger anyone trigger it, right? i don't wanna anger anyone yeah so the next exercise that hit me hard again is because it happened the second time around it was the same okay the second time around is like you have to rate yourself from 1 to 51 1 is the highest 51 is the lowest because we were 51 students i went directly to 20 in the middle 25 or 26 because i know i've accomplished half of what i want to but i still have another half to accomplish so, in my life i'm speaking about my life so it hit me hard because i was then st standing there in the middle of the line and they were all no we have to be all together we have to hold hands each other <laughs> because there's no number number or rating for all of us we were all the same we're all one there's this um i don't want to say it but there's this specific person who said that and they were very tall again <laughs> and they were all tall i'm short okay i'm five two and a half okay i'm five two so i'm shorter <laughs> so <laughs> here we go again is it the same thing again like um where everybody looks at me like 50 students against me did it really happen it did on the first day in the advanced course hit me so hard and like should i cave in should i cave in no i want to stay here because this is where i'm at like oh my god if there are 50 students i think like they're all doing it together maybe i'm the one who's wrong right if right in my head but i know i know what's right that's how i am when i was a child like i know what's mm. right but why are they why are they why is he or she or them doing this when i know that's wrong so i caved in i joined them and then and... the facilitator came in the room and said this is the problem blah 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 on the paper you rated yourself from one to ten and you answered it honestly and now we were we're doing the physical exercise where you rate yourself everybody everybody rates themselves in the room there's only one number one and one number 51 each number is only one person you get it yes now that everybody can see how you rate yourself you're not being honest And I was like, like, I was very, very upset to myself. I was very, very disappointed. At the same time, I didn't want to take full responsibility. And in my head, I blamed all of them for forcing me to join them. But then again, that's it. Eh? That's it. Like. I feel I'm always the victim when, hey, you're not a victim. You chose to join them. Yeah, they were like looking at you and all that, but you still have, I still have my own choice. Right. So for me, I did it again, second time around. <laughs> I hurt myself again. <laughs> right so the next day i didn't realize it again like i want all of this 50 students to say sorry to me because i was right they were all wrong so the next day 
I am my own zone. I am my own world. Giving everybody a hard time and basically just being a bitch to everyone because I know I'm right. I, I, I understand it completely. I understood it completely. They were all wrong and they, they should all say sorry to me because I was doing it right. And then, you know, I just felt like the need of to say I'm right because I think I got it from when I was a child where I can't right. voice anything what's in my heart and then I lash out yeah. I give attitude I give bad behavior and then and then they don't understand it because I don't speak mm -hmm. I don't say I can't communicate well I can't articulate myself well because going back I was I was um, voiceless before right but I hello you can change that you can change that absolutely and that's why you're even here today I know it's <laughs> like I'm 32 <laughs> I'm just learning this but hey it's hard you know I have classmates there in that um course who are double my age that are still struggling with their past that are still living their life how they lived their life when they were abused when they were you know um whatever happened in their life until now so right. It's not overnight change. I'm speaking right now as if like I've changed. No, it's not. It's a process and I'm working on it. I'm working on myself and I guess every one of us. So yeah, that could change whatever, whatever you've been through. You have the power to change it. You have the power to say no if you don't want to. And you have the voice to stand up for yourself and not cave in to people even if they're 50 against one 50 against one well you know what they say though the universe or god or even in just the advanced seminars or in the seminar will keep repeating its lessons and it gets right here in front oh of my your face god, yes. until you really really see with it. The relationships as well right of course not just romantic relationship even like with friends and family of course right. like yeah you are always faced with them because yes. they are your family so you have to deal with it whether because with me they have to change they're the one who's wrong it's mm -hmm. like the exercise right yeah no you change you change and then your outer world changes i mean i want to i want to really make a change for for myself and that's why you're here that's why i'm here that's why i met you and everyone and i'm very very thankful to to really have you and christian's family to really support and really love me love transforms i'm very very thankful for that that i have like really really good friends and who have who has my back yeah and that's support great. system right and i know okay because and a lot of people are gonna Lots of people, you know, they come on camera and then of course, you know, with your with your fame and all that kind of stuff. It I just want everyone to know and the audience, you know, personal development, going on a spiritual journey is a lifelong thing. It starts somewhere and sometimes you can even regress from it, but it starts somewhere and it's a it's always it's gonna be a lifelong journey. And that's what we're here for. We are here for a lifelong journey. But when you're aware, when you're awake, when you've turned within, when you take responsibility, right? The whole world outside changes. Because if not, right, you're, you're going through your whole life blaming everyone outside and you can't control that. What is the big aha? The big aha or the big epiphany is that, oh, everything changes when you change, change. inside. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Right? That's very true. Like, and can't argue with that. 
And so I was given a moment to be, you know, maybe an ear to listen to, a shoulder to cry on, an older sister or a friend, you know, to see you for really who you are. Mm. And spending even just these last three weeks, I feel like I've known you for a really long time. And thanks for opening up and and being authentic and genuine because this really you doing this will really not only set yourself free but it will also inspire others to do the same and that's what i've had the pleasure of doing on the abelian podcast is putting people and their voices here letting them stand in their power because there's nothing wrong in standing in their own true power but also letting them know that they have a voice and a voice that can you know transform the world so, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, you, this is only just the beginning from a new set of perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what do you, what do you, where do you think, where do you see Christine going um, from here? Oh, <laughs> it's, ow, oh, I'm excited. You are. I'm excited and I I actually can't wait to like, you know, start a new beginning. Yeah. Because I think every day is a new beginning. Absolutely. It's not just this day or tomorrow. Every day is a new beginning and it's up to you to make a choice. Right. To do good or bad. To live in the past or fear tomorrow. Right. So every day is a new day for a new beginning. Every day is a blessing. Every day is is great. You always have to be positive with life and don't take life seriously. Because we don't know how much time we have here. Right. And I have been very serious with my life. <laughs> Blaming other people and, you know, you take responsibility for what happened to me. <laughs> right. So I'm like, oh, please, Christine, stop it. Right. The world doesn't revolve with you. Right. You know, so. you get to choose. Our facilitators always say moment after moment after moment, you get to choose. Yeah. Right. So we're choosing something different. Yeah, make dif- Make a difference for yourself and also contribute to the world by, you know, even just a smile to one one person will is contributing already mm-hmm. the giver's gain yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna i know everyone's gonna be what are they talking about i'm gonna allow you as time goes by to share your experiences with the organization and how you'd like to open that up to the world it doesn't have to be here because right now what i really wanted to concentrate on was your story and you being able to be an inspiration to others but more importantly for you to be able to liberate yourself from all the different things that have held you it's out <laughs> it's out and you did wow. it <laughs> i'm proud I of you i feel so light <laughs> i'm proud of you and i gave you the space i just kept holding the space i said please god just whatever's meant to come out please come out but I never told this story to anyone. Now it's out. Now Ooh. it's out. And <laughs> you I did like, it, yeah. right? Mm. You were, for this moment in time, we're transformed. Thank you so much for the chance. No, you're very welcome. Is for there... time. No. I think time is the best gift. You know, one of the things that I tell people, though, is when I went on this journey, I always wanted to be able to tell people stories, right? And I was just like, okay, I'll, I'll share their story. But... I come out a whole year later and every person that I've gone to interview has blessed my life because it's allowed me to heal. There's always, there's always mirror reflections in everyone that you, you interview. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Or no, you, you, cause we're all the same. We are all the same, right? We're all looking and feeling love. Absolutely. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. In the end. Yeah. So spread the love right spread the love one person joy. <laughs> one person at a time right yes yeah is there anything okay so spread the love spread the joy is there anyone in you know is there any closing remarks that you want to leave like people you'd like to thank or things that you want to you know reference to back to this whole hour and a half interview um 
I I want to just, you know, um, contribute as as this goes out. Yeah. That this will be the start of my contribution to the world wherein I want to do something to make, you know, a change as well. And I think I have that um, enough power to influence and give um, something to the world and help other people. And maybe through your platform, I could, you know, people might see it and hear my story and they get inspired of like because every story which I learned from the class the course we all have stories that you know even if it's all different the the pinpoint or the, you know the the main thing is all about giving love right where there is no love there's bitterness hateness hatefulness yeah but if there's love like everything is just good the highest the highest frequency of energy yeah so that's the thing that we can all contribute to the world instead of like trying to hate other others family friends or like you know being negative about yourself like why not love yourself even if you have like things that are holding you down why not be happy you'll never know like tomorrow is the last day right of your life what is it today is the first day of the rest of your life yeah is that what it is saying yeah yeah or you never know right if you if tomorrow becomes your last day i think i've learned you know i always fear death i've learned that you know you shouldn't fear death because death is your fuel to wake you up that hey you have to do your you have to do you because you'll never know when death is coming right so you have to do what you want in your life right and make the most out of it because we don't know our time we don't know our time yep we're only here for this small moment in in history we got two right you got two choices you're gonna live or die like we always have to create and not be stagnant and decay right create and pro- progress so that's it so now that's becomes it now becomes the process of incorporating and integrating everything in your life and i just really congratulate you for this amazing amazing um bravery and that you took for for coming on the podcast and sharing your story it really will inspire and transform lives so thank you so much christine clank christine reyes uh, 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> i didn't know if i would so did you anything else so i just want to say Aww. thank you to everyone um this being the uh, season opener of season four i just wanted to congratulate thank you so much i have a closing message and typically i can just kind of say it out but i really wanted to be so precise with this so if you will lend me your last few minutes to the audience um and i'm gonna read this one out so i would like to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart most especially my family and my friends who are my day ones from this dream realized In one year, I was able to grow this podcast to being a top 5% in global podcasts on Listen Notes amongst 2.4 million global podcasts around the world. I did not look at the downloads, excuse me, the statistics or the numbers, but rather I paid attention to the connections and the unfolding of each story as each guest agreed to be of authenticity and genuine service to others. In one year, I've interviewed people from the United States, the Philippines, Australia, Jamaica, Canada, and the United Kingdom, and it's only the beginning as we continue to roll out our stories in the seasons to come. This mission was not set out for my own benefit, but for one day to be a gift to the world. Yes. I feel a certain responsibility that's in my hands to tell the stories of not only Christine, and all my guests for the last four seasons, but moreover as a platform for the human population that there is that that is here to change the trajectory of the human race. 
although this present moment marks unprecedented, unprecedented times in human history that are uncertain, there will, one, there will come a day that all of our stories will be time capsules for many generations ahead to look back upon, knowing that we cared enough to go through all the healing so, they, so that we could become a world and a race known for love, compassion, creativity, and service to others. So be love, be divine, be one, and spread your wings and fly. Woohoo! So thank you everyone for tuning in to the first episode of season four with Christine Clank. Um, and it's truly been an absolute um, amazing journey. And I, this is just the beginning. So yeah. here is to both of us and to the world. I love that you're saying my real name, by the way. Christine Clank. Christine Clank. Christine Clank. <laughs> so everyone, Christine Clank. Thank you so much for Thank tuning so in much. to uh, the season opener of the 8 Billion Podcast. And we will catch you on our next episode. Yay. Awesome. We did it. I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you for listening to today's episode. If it's moved you in any way, please review and share your thoughts or text me your thoughts at 949-247-2800.